Hey everybody, welcome to Grim's Forge Gaming. Today we are going to cover my Magni. This is a Warden build and it's a hybrid. We're using both Magicka and Stamina abilities. We are using Oak and Soul on this build. And uh, if you stick around until after we present all the armors in the, the actual build, I'll tell you what I would do if I were to run a two bar setup on this. Right now I want to run one bar though with Oak and Soul. I don't have to worry about maintaining my armor buff. I don't have to worry about maintaining my uh, offensive uh, you know, major brutality, major sorcery with it. It's basically just go offensive and just worry about sustaining and healing. And it's um, it's hard to move away from that, uh, the ease of combat. So let's uh, jump into it. So first thing we said is we are using Oak and Soul. And Oak and Soul has a bunch of major uh, and a bunch of minor buffs, obviously. This is after the nerf that they've done to it, but it's still extremely powerful for the reasons I just stated. You don't need to keep, you don't need to worry about <clears throat> upkeep on your uh, armor buff or your offensive and defensive buffs. And you also get a lot of minors with this, minor heroism, minor fortitude, minor intellect, and all of that. So I'd have to say Oak and Soul is still probably best in slot. Um, I don't know that you're going to get a, even a five-piece bonus that's going to match everything that Oak and Soul does, right? Okay. Um, first five-piece that we are running is essence thief okay essence thief can be you can pick this up from white gold tower and uh, or you can be down in the sewers and you can be farming in the sewers and the key fragments that you get you can turn around and take the key fragments to white gold tower uh, if you go right into white gold tower and turn to the right there's going to be a vault inside the dungeon and um, you can pick these pieces up a little tip or trick as a side note if you're <clears throat> I'm going to be farming Essence Thief. Go in with a friend that also has key frags. Um, I, it takes X amount of key frags to get into the door, maybe 60 or 120, I don't remember. But um, you need those in your inventory just to get into the door to convert them to a key to open the chest. Okay, that's how the key frags work. Um, but you can actually be in a group with a friend. And um, let's say you got a group of three people and you all have key fragments, like five stacks of key frags on you. You can go in through the door together and all be in there. And in that moment, you can actually trade the pieces amongst each other, okay? It's super smart to do that because you will all get your Essence Thief pieces that much quicker, okay? Um, anyways, Essence Thief, um, two pieces max stam, three pieces max stam, four piece is weapon and spell damage, five piece dealing damage with a light or heavy attack draws essence from the enemy that pools near them for five seconds. Drawing from the pool heals you for 4,600 health, restoring 4,200 stamina and increasing your damage done by 10% for 10 seconds. You can create a pool every 10 seconds. So this technically has 100% uptime, right? By the time this buff drops, you can then create another pool with a light attack or heavy attack and pick it up and get the buff again. The level of sustain on this is incredible too. I noticed that I can, uh, on builds that I'm hurting in like recoveries, um, Essence Thief allows me to uh, run double damage sets if I want, right? Or run this plus a damage set and not really worry about <coughs> recoveries. <coughs> Losing my voice. Um, you can see that we're using infused weapon damage on this one, and we're using infused weapon damage on this, and we're using infused weapon damage on this, okay? The next set that we are running is Heme Jaws. Heme Jaws can uh, be farmed at Runes of Mazatune, okay? So let's talk about this set real quickly, and I'm going to show you some video footage, but... Um, the two pieces Stam Recovery, the three pieces Max Stam, the four pieces Crit Chance, the five first five piece is weapon damage and or spell damage and then the last five piece when you are within 28 meters of an enemy you are in combat with the and the enemy dies you gain major berserk for 10 seconds increasing your damage done by 10 percent now the thing about this is there's no duration on it okay now major berserk cannot stack on top of itself but you can refresh the buff okay so you can basically as long as you're killing mobs or killing players you can continually have major berserk going however when it says when you are within 28 meters of an enemy you were in combat bit with um, 
you will proc this. A couple things. Number one, you do not need to be within 28 meters of um, something that you're in combat with in order to get this buff. Now in Battlegrounds, it works the same way. Um, I'm in a group with these four people and they're in combat. I'm not necessarily in combat and Bob's all the way over on the other side of the map, but he's killing people and I in turn get that buff. And so if your group is very killy and they're actually out there killing things, you will have a really good uptime on this armor. It doesn't just fall on your shoulders to maintain this buff. Um, also, um, so it's the two things. Number one, you yourself don't need to be in combat with them. And number two, you don't need to be 28 meters with them, right? The, uh, neither one of those things in the five piece are proper right now, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to do more testing, but you can see how Crocs is a mile and a half away killing things and I'm uh, still getting the buff and it works the same for me in Battlegrounds. So I don't know. Now, this said, Heem Jaws. Super valuable in the sewers, super, uh, like I really like it in battlegrounds because people are dying and say you tag a bunch of people and then, you know, this guy goes over there and gets killed even by the other team, but he dies. Um, I end up getting uh, this buff. And so battlegrounds, it works really well and dungeons it works really well and the sewers it works really well like or if you're up in the districts and you're bossing you're uh, trying to farm Telvar so um, this works really well also keep in take into account how often it's hard to drop um, combat in Cyrodiil so you'll be running around Cyrodiil and just in constant combat right and so you're in combat and if your team is out there killing people or you put damage into somebody and then they run off and get killed by someone else, you'll get this uh, buff as well. And keep and like we were saying before, this is Major Berserk, whereas this one is a unique, a unique 10% damage buff in addition to that. OK, so that's pretty cool. Both of those stack on top of one another. Um, I'm currently running, I believe. Um, let's double check here. Yeah, so on my Magni, I'm only running one heavy, and that one piece is going to be the trainee set. And you can change the trade on this if you wanted to. Like, obviously, training isn't doing me much good. You can go whatever route you want to go with that. In pen, well fitted, whatever you want to do. And then you can see that my Him Jaws, I, I have. Um, two random random traits right i got a divines here and a reinforced and those could probably be changed but almost everything is prismatic enchant because we're on this we're using both max or we're using stamina abilities and magic abilities okay and we are oak and soul i think i just uh threw this on here to get it out of my inventory it's level 40 whatever don't pay attention to that okay you saw nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, let's look at the stats here. Um, I guess I can't say unbuffed because we are technically somewhat buffed. We've got our uh, major brutality and uh, major resolve going right now. So you can see our max mag is about 14K. Our mag recovery is at 1,200 and that goes higher. Health recovery is at 30,000 or health, max health is 30,000, sorry. Health recovery just under 500. Our max stam is at 26,000. And right now on PC, specifically PCNA, a lot of, um, a lot of people are steering towards higher cap health thresholds, lower max um, resources mostly because you're we're in a hybrid meta and you, you don't have to lean all of your abilities into max stam or all of your abilities into max mag you can kind of bounce back and forth between the two so i can focus on running less max stat and kind of a little bit more recoveries if i choose so um, you can see our stam recovery is about 1600 um leaning into 1700 and our, our weapon damage is 6k that gets much higher i think i've seen this uh hit over 7400 that's with like multiple buffs going continuous and things like that um but 6k to 7400 is nice and our weapon critical is not too bad at 26 percent um i do see a quite a lot of crits especially the way our uh, damage lines up on this build so physical pen is on the low but one of the abilities that we use actually applies major and minor breach so there's like 9k resistances stripped from the target on top of this it puts us at 10 to 11k 
um, pin on people pretty regularly. We just need to be able to hit that ability on them. Our base spell resistance and physical resistance is 24K, but this gets up to 27K, and I'll show that in a little bit. And then our crit resistance, 1800. So let me do a couple things here. We're going to hit our uh, major resolve and look at our character sheet. You can see there's 27,000 for our resistances. That's pretty good. And then um, we're going to hit that, and we're going to hit a potion. And you can see that our recovery is 1500 mag recovery seems to be a sweet spot. We were able to do a lot of Arctic Blast and then 1900 on our stand recovery actually is feels really good considering we're also not taking into account Essence Thief and that bulk of health and stamina that comes in every time we pick that uh, rune or sigil up off the ground. And so our recovery on this is actually pretty nice. I really like it a lot. Um, let's see. Right now we're using the Lord. I, I needed to do that to push my health up a little higher to get to the 30k threshold. I didn't want to play around with other things. Um, I, I really like where my stats are at and the Mundus stone ended up being the piece that just kind of, the last piece that brought everything together. If you want to run 2400 less health on this and risk getting your face nuked off, you, you do you. Um, I just needed the extra health on this. We're running Smoked Bear Haunch on this, and um, you can see that gives me uh, health recovery, stam recovery, and mag recovery, and some max health. And um, you can see all the buffs from uh, Oaken Soul, and we are a Nord on this, okay? So we get those. Let's uh, jump into the abilities, uh, the abilities, and we'll look at this here real quick. Now, um, there was a change to Rapid Strikes. You can see that in the video footage that I, I had. Rapid Strikes animation has been changed, and I actually like it a lot. It just kind of looks like you're swinging like a rampaging uh, Viking, right? And so that's pretty cool. Each hit increases the damage of the subsequent hit by 5%. And so um, we can drive up, there's four of them, that's an extra t uh, 20% uh, on that last tick. And if we have both Major uh, Berserk going and we have the unique 10% going from Essence Thief on top of what Oakensole provides and this going, that this ramps up very quickly as far as a primary spammable. Um, the hitbox on it also is very nice. This is a very friendly spammable. Uh, hitbox on this is better than D-Swing, so um, check this out. We are running uh, Deep Fisher, and you can see the first hit on Deep Fisher hits for 13k, and then the second hit for 18k. This hits pretty darn hard. Um, also, there, there at the bottom, you can see that it uh, does major and minor breach. So there's 6K and then another 3K of their resistance is gone for 10 seconds. And so this allowed me to put the build together and not have to focus on um, where am I going to get pin from. This is bringing the pin. Okay. I am running uh, Whirling Blades just as an execute and AoE spammable. So um, there are times where if there's a bunch of people fighting. It's just making sure that this is going through its rotation, right? And just uh, doing light attack or heavy attack spin to win, right? Those are my combination. You can see we are running Resolving Vigor. This has a 26K tooltip. Uh, we are in CP right now, and it gives us minor resolve. There is a way to buff this up to just astronomical levels, and I haven't done the build video yet, but my Ghost of Sparta Kratos DK has... 37, 38K tooltip on this. Yeah, 37, 38K tooltip. Crazy. If I wanted to go on my CP and bump this up even more, I probably could. And maybe we do that. I don't know. We'll look at it. I'll evaluate it as we're looking at CP. <laughs> Arctic Blast. Um, this has a pretty high magic cost, but it's a pretty big burst heal, right? You can see that's 12K, almost 13K. So uh, when this crits, I'll see really big heals. And you see the winds persist, applying chilled, um, stunning them immediately. So this is not only a burst heal, it's also a stun on demand, an AOE stun as well. Um, and it also does um, AOE damage. So it's going to do roughly a thousand damage pulsing or swirling around me every two seconds. So it's a little bit of pressure. So it's a dot, it's a burst heal, and it's a stun. Like... This ability has made a, a 
bounce back um, from the previous patches where they had it gutted and this has kind of helped this build come to into play and you'll see a lot more wardens running around because they did right by this ability in my opinion okay I am running Northern Storm currently. It's a 200 ultimate. Northern Storm does almost 600 damage every one second for eight seconds, and it applies a slow. Um, it also gives me an extra 300 uh, weapon and or spell damage for 30 seconds, and so this buffs my uh, damage output when I hit it. Um, you and nearby allies allies gain major protection reducing your damage taken so I have major and minor protection while I'm hitting this I feel fairly tanky and my healing kit is really nice so um, uh, yeah I'm leaning into dot pressure on this too th in my blue tree so this is considered a damage over time effect and this is a damage over time effect um, even though it reads a little funky, it doesn't read like normal damage over time. Like if you read uh, read this, it says you deal frost damage every two seconds. This one just says deal 3,100 physical damage in four consecutive hits. It doesn't read like it's a damage over time, but the when you do the ability, the damage is listed as damage over time. Um, so same with this, damage over time. Okay, uh, make sure you get all your passives. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Ooh. Missed that, okay? There's more pen, so missed it, okay? Um, I'm not currently running any of these green balance uh, abilities, and so I know a lot of people will be like, ew, that's so silly. You're missing out on uh, minor toughness or whatever, an extra 10% health, and maybe if you were to just switch out one of these and go with uh, you know, one of these, you could. And if you want to play around with that, that's fine. Maybe throw uh, living vines or leeching vines or whatever, right here and see how that feels but I actually prefer the um, the re the vigor heal over time and I also preferred the minor resolve uh, that you got the extra armor so it was really hard for me to move away from this to get the extra 10% health and basically I just got the health through my Mundus right and uh, make sure you get all these. This is a flex spot, so if I'm ever getting gunned down at range, I might keep these two abilities and drop my execute and drop that on the bar. Um, but I don't know. Um, also, you could put uh, Dawnbreaker, Dawnbreaker Smiting, um, Flawless Dawnbreaker, and get an extra 2 or 3% weapon damage out of this build through the Fighter Guild passive. So if you want to run Dawnbreaker instead of Northern Storm, you do you. Uh, dual wield, make sure you get all those passives. Armor buffs, make sure you get all those passives. Heavy armor, you can get all of them except for this last one because I'm only running one piece heavy armor. Now, if you end up running two or more, then pick that up, obviously. Um, fighter guild abilities, you can see I'm not running fighter guild abilities and I have not run it, um, but uh, banish the wicked, you get ultimate whenever you um, kill anything with a with a Dawnbreaker ability and then Slayer will give you an extra 3% weapon and or spell damage by slotting Dawnbreaker. So if you want to go that route, you can. Also, Dawnbreaker is significantly less, so you'll have more ultimates up and available. Maybe I explore that. I don't know. I've been having a lot of fun with Northern Storm and it's super um, problematic in uh, open field fights or um, in battlegrounds and stuff like that. People are just like, get me away from this guy. So... Um, that works out well. I don't even have my Undaunted passives and Assault. I did pick those up, um, but we're not too far into Assault. And you can see that we are a Nord. I like Nord for this because we get some max health, we get some max stam, and we get some built-in ult gen, and then we get some additional resistances. So um, you're going to be missing all that if you go with uh, Breton or whatever else. I'm not saying going with Breton's wrong. I'm just saying why I went with Nord. I like the ult gen, the extra stam, the extra health. And the extra resistances so um, yeah let's jump into our CP okay um, we are running steeds blessing for that extra 20% movement speed out of combat we're running rationer it adds an extra 30 minutes onto our food you can get even more than that if you have some points put into uh, provisioning passives and then Treasure Hunter right now. Now, if I end up spending more time out in Cyrodiil, I'll switch out Treasure Hunter for War Mount. Um, so that way, because Cyrodiil, huge open space, it's a mount simulator. And then Gifted Rider, you saw that, uh, increase your mount speed by 10%. Um, I, I think that's probably 
the most important things. Break fall is fairly important uh, reduction. And um, yeah, anyways, everything else is a preference. So, okay, Untamed Aggression, that's an extra 150 weapon and spell damage. Wrathful Strikes, that's an extra 205 weapon and spell damage. Thaumaturge, increasing our damage over time effects by 6%, which is our Rapid Strikes, which is our ultimate currently, and which is our Arctic Blast Dot, okay? for pressure and then master at arms increase your damage down with direct damage attacks by three percent or a total six percent and so our uh, deep fissure is going to be buffed by that as well as our light and heavy attacks and things like that they're considered direct damage so um so make sure you get those passives then when you jump in here go to both sides of this because there's an extra 150 or 100 weapon and spell damage for mighty um for martial attacks and there's also a extra 100 weapon and spell damage for magic attacks, which our deep fissure is a magic attack, but our rapid strikes is considered a um, physical attack. And so, um, yeah, so make sure you do that. And then on the blue tree, make sure you jump in here and get these three things, right? You got a little bit of extra healing and then damage mitigation. So that's pretty important. Okay. Red tree. Rejuvenation, you can see I got all the top three to the left there. So rejuvenation's extra 90 health magic and stamina recovery. Fortified is extra armor. So between that and me being a Nord, my resistances are pretty high. And a lot of people will be like, oh, you got your resistances so high. It's a combination of both those things. You can see here's Boundless Vitality for some extra max health. I also get some more max health right here through Hero's Vigor. And then the last one is going to be Celerity. Celerity is going to give me an extra 10% movement speed. I'm not running um, the... Um, I'm not running any of the Animal Companion abilities that uh, give you movement speed. Falcon Swiftness never have, right? Uh, because I, I actually leveled this guy as um, a single bar the, all the way 1 through 50 because I knew I was going to use Oconsole on him. I never even leveled a lot of the you know things that i would run typically on a two bar setup but falcon swiftness would give you major access to major expedition i just simply don't have room on the bar for it and also um yeah i don't have room you know we have a primary spammable we have a burst we have an execute we have a hot with also an armor buff attached to it uni uh, unique to us with minor resolve and then we also have um our burst heal and cc and dot like we have everything we need in this kit um if you want to do anything you can switch that out so okay that's everything we're gonna run to the um outfit station because a lot of people always ask me what are you using i just had someone ask me yesterday hey what are those axes that you're using and um so let's jump in here and look at it this is a new portion of my build videos because style is in game right so okay we're using dawn's Avenger Pauldron. We're using the Prophet's Wraps. We're using Glen Moral Weird Breaches. Okay. We're using Sai Sahan's Jack. We're using Black Drake Clan Wrap Sash. And we're using Black Drake Clan Wrap Shoes. Okay, I like those. And then when we look at the Sword Thane, uh, you can see the axes are the Sword Thane axes. Okay. I like those a lot. This guy looks like a rampaging uh, Viking. Pretty cool. What else here? Um, last thing we'll look at is appearance. You can see I'm not wearing a hat currently. Um, I am using the hairstyle that has the braids, the uh, beaded crested braids. And then um, body markings. We are using the horror within body markings. Okay. And uh, personality is heroic. So that's everything. This is my Magni, and I've been having a lot of fun with him. He works in Battlegrounds. He works in PvE. You can uh, solo dungeons on him. You, um, He's just a lot of fun. His damage is up there, like I said, between 30 and 45k is what I've pushed. Maybe you push more if you change a couple abilities and dungeons, but my current toolkit is set up for PvP, being able to uh, survive um, outnumbered. So that's everything. You guys be safe out there. Have a great day. Bye.